So, I thought we play a game. One hand. The Sydney winner decides, decides who lives. And who does not. not. <laughs> Would you trust that guy to deal the cards, huh? Would you? Yo, what's up guys? Jason Ma, the Magician, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to do every single card trick from John Wick 4. I recently went to the cinema and saw John Wick 4, and aside from it being a masterpiece of film entertainment, completely feeding every single inch of my monkey brain with all of the adrenaline and action-pumped adventure you could possibly want, well, there were some card tricks in there which I found really interesting. The character who does all those slick card tricks is played by Scott Adkins, which is interesting because he normally plays this like ripped Greek guy looking figure in his movies but in John Wick 4 he plays like a bigger heavier set guy but that still doesn't stop him from getting some sick licks in on old John Wick you know what I'm saying anyway in the movie he appears to do some actually pretty sick flourishes so I thought in this video I'm gonna teach them all to you these include the hand-to-hand -hand dribble the card spring and probably the one that I'm most excited to teach you guys the card flickeroonie 6000 I don't actually know what it's called but it looks awesome before we dive into the tutorial, make sure that you smash like if you haven't already and subscribe. Every bit of interaction helps me out immensely. It's just a mouse click for you. It could be life changing for me. So smash like now. But first, since we're in the middle of a 365 days of magic challenge, I'm gonna do today's magic trick right now. All right, pay close attention for this trick here. We use the Ace of Spades. This card kind of looks like an arrow tip and that's gonna be perfect for when we get a card selected at random. In this case, the Seven of Clubs. That seven's going to be left somewhere in the center of the pack and in order to locate it, we have to give the deck a series of cuts like this and then the arrow will locate it in a single shot. Check it out, we riffle along, bang! And just like that, we've fired the arrow directly into the selected card. Let me show you what I mean. If I just spread these across the table like this, you can see one card here in the middle, the Ace of Spades sandwiched between two. And it's the 10 of, wait a minute, that's not the selected card. Well, the two of, no, that's not right. But I never said I was gonna get it in between the cards or near the card, I said I was gonna get the card directly because the Ace of Spades is now completely changed into the Seven of Clubs. And that right there is day number 86's trick, baby. Now I figure since I'm so eager to teach you this move specifically, we'd start off with it. So grab yourself a deck of cards. The beautiful thing about all of this is you don't need any fancy cards. Just a regular pack of playing cards will work just fine. Now in order to execute the move, all you have to do is pay close attention here. I'm holding the deck in a very comfortable, standard way to hold the deck of cards. Three fingers along this edge, thumb along the other. Point a finger at the front to stop the cards from sliding forward. And what I'm going to do to start this off is I'm gonna use my thumb just up the top. I'm gonna to contact the top corner and it's gonna pull this card, the topmost card back a little bit, a tiny bit. You can see it's like around about a border's length off the edge of the deck there, you see? It's like overhanging the back of the deck there. And that's the setup. The move is I'm going to place my pinky now. It's gonna curl around the back of the cards and I'm just gonna contact that edge and the other edge is gonna contact the fleshy bit of my thumb and I'm gonna apply pressure. And you can see I create this kind of bow, yeah? Now if I do this quick enough and I create the bow but also I pull my pinky fast enough, the card will just simply flick off. So in a single motion, I pull the card back. I just pull back like this and the card will create the bow and then it eventually will release itself and flick. So you wanna hold the deck like this, this way to the floor, yeah? So you're still holding it in that same normal grip I showed you before, but you're gonna hold it up like this so that you can see the backs of the cards very clearly. Use your thumb to pull down and you do that same thing, but with the deck like this, it's gonna make the card shoot kind of like sideways, you see? Oh, I accidentally shot two. <laughs> You can actually get some pretty decent range on it, but it's an excellent way to produce a card. And it really looks like you're doing nothing, like you just snap the fingers and a card just bounces out of the deck. You know what I mean? I am gonna show you from this angle here too. So I'm holding that deck in that normal grip. I'm pulling back with the thumb. The pinky is then going to contact that corner like this, and I'm just going to apply that pressure and then it will flick off. You see that? Like it's really not that hard. Don't overthink it. You're just gonna pull the pinky back until eventually the card will just fly off. Now the amount of contact that I'm having with the card, if you look at my pinky, it's literally just like the very edge of my pinky is contacting. I don't want too much pinky on it, otherwise I'm just gonna end up folding a card in half, you see? I just want a very little bit of contact with it, just enough that I can create the bubble and eventually it will just pop straight off. 
with enough practice, you can shoot the card across and catch it. And that right there is the beauty of the card Flicker Rooney 6000. Now, once you get a feel for that move and the execution of it, the best way to practice it is like sitting on your bed or sitting on the couch while watching John Wick 4. Now up next on the list is the hand-to-hand -hand dribble. Now in the movie, he only does a very small hand-to-hand -hand dribble, but don't let that sway you because you can get this thing looking crazy big with enough practice. So to do this is actually super easy, barely an inconvenience. You're essentially just going to be riffling the cards like this. Now to do it, you're gonna contact like this, three fingers along the front edge, thumb on the back edge, this pointer finger curls on pushes on the back like this. Now when you create that bow, you see I'm bowing it away from the palm of my hand like this, my thumb can now kind of like slide along the back of the cards, releasing them one at a time. Now when you get pretty smooth at just letting them fall into your hand like this, you then wanna try holding the deck this way. And from here, you're just going to let them fall into your hand. Now truthfully, this is all there is to it. You're just going to riffle up the back like this. It may take you a little bit of practice to learn how to let the cards kind of fall uh, one by one, but when you get enough practice, you'll get nice and smooth. And once you get smooth enough, you wanna try and have the cards fall further away. And to make sure that the cards don't go everywhere, what you want to have is an even, an even fall of the cards, allowing them to kind of fall into alignment like this. Okay, they're going to fall into an alignment, almost like holding each other in place. So that way, with like when you want to go higher, you can actually just have the cards kind of keep them all in a line. Does that make sense? I know it seems a little bit confusing, but if I come here, you can actually see how the cards fall. They kind of like fall into this like S shape where one card is behind it and one card is in front of it as they're falling. So they kind of inadvertently hold each other in place. I really don't know how to explain it any more than that. Just know that if you get this hand-to-hand -hand fall of the cards nice and smooth, the dribble that is, you can eventually start increasing the distance that you let the cards fall. <clears throat> now the hand that they're falling into, what happens is I actually pull my pinky back like this and I try to get the cards to fall in front of that pinky. If my pinky's not there, what's going to inadvertently happen is the cards will just fall off the back of my hand. And you don't want that, because then you have to pick up cards. Now last on this list is the card spring. This is gonna make you look like an absolute pro at the card table. It probably will get you banned from playing poker in the future with your friends, because they won't want you there, because you're too damn good at cards, man. Now admittedly, this is probably the hardest of the three that I'm gonna teach you. However, if you just follow the steps, I guarantee you, you'll be doing it in no time. Now, first things first, the grip. You're gonna grip the card with these two fingers, the pointer and the middle finger at the front edge. Okay, and I'm going all the way to the corner. And your thumb is gonna contact the other corner. So I'm actually, you know, it's from edge to edge. Most of the pressure will be applied from corner to corner, thumb to middle finger, yeah? And I'm gonna create this like bend in the cards. Like I'm really gonna flex these cards. Now, when you first start learning how to do this, it's going to be a little bit high because you're going to have to build up literal physical strength in your hand to be able to do it properly. And you might be strong enough to bend a deck of cards, but you might not be strong enough to have complete control over the amount of pressure that you're applying and then at the same time releasing those cards, and if that makes any sense. So once you get that little bend, you can see here the cards are actually coming off the back of my thumb, okay? They're all coming off the back of my thumb. And in order to do that, what's happening is I'm creating the bow, which is creating tension because the cards wanna spring back into shape like this. So I'm creating this tension and then my thumb is kind of rolling, rolling off. Like it's slowly, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm shifting the pressure. So at the moment, all the pressure's at the tip of my thumb and I'm kind of like shifting the pressure along my the pad of my thumb yeah and to do that i have to roll my thumb back while sh while constantly controlling the amount of pressure that i'm applying to the deck and allow the cards to fly off like this now my advice is when you start off just hold the deck really close to your hand and just try to do this yeah like don't let them like fly yet just try and get them real close to your hand and just try to get them to be able to try and get it to a stage where you can more or less just have them coming off one by one like this yeah it's all about that release of pressure and just don't forget the corner to corner and that the, the deck is bowing in towards your palm, yeah? And you're just gonna release the, that pressure very gradually. Now over time, you're gonna develop more strength and with more strength, you'll have more control and with more control, you'll be able to get more height. Now the hand that's receiving the cards, I'm kind of creating this cage because they're gonna spring, if they're coming off your thumb, they'll naturally spring kind of backwards towards you. And so what you wanna do is you wanna have your hand 
forward to meet the cards and they're going to fall into your hand and then they'll naturally fall forward. So you wanna create almost like a cage, a cage with your fingers for the cards to fall into, you see? I'm not doing any fancy handling, my hand is literally just sat here like a cage to receive the cards. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. All the tricks from John Wick 4. Now, if I missed anything, comment below and maybe I'll add that too. I know there was one scene where he throws a card and totally executes a dude immediately. And if you want a tutorial on that, well, let me know in the comments below. But until then, I'll see you next time on Dragon Ball. Actually, it's the 365 Days of Magic Challenge. Enchanté.